you actually did to kind of upskill yourself in in like um being i've read a few books yeah like i've read a few books so i've read a really good book it's yeah. called um captain's class okay um it's a so this journalist did he was spending a lot of time around elite teams mm-hmm. he was a journalist and he spent a lot of times in like the yankees change rooms and whatnot and covering the book you think he did a bit of the bulls coverage when okay. jordan was when they were elite with the jordan yep. era and um he was obsessed with figuring out the one common denominator amongst the most successful teams or he just wanted to figure out like why elite teams became elite teams and i'm talking elite teams being like teams to win three or four flags in a row mm-hmm. and be like highly not successful ju- not just one not just like one premiership and Anyway, he did a lot of research and a lot of, and collected a lot of data. And essentially, what he found, which is what he originally didn't real didn't know, what he found was the one key factor in all of the most elite teams in all different sports across the world across the last hundred years. The number one factor was the number one common denominator was the captain and the way the captain led the team. So it's a fascinating read. It's a really, really good book. And um, basically he lists the seven or eight traits of, of these leaders. They're, they all are like ridiculously the same. It's, it's crazy mm-hmm. how in all these elite teams from different eras and different sports, their captains are almost like mirrors in terms of how they led their team and who and yeah. the sort of personalities they were. So it sort of goes into a bit, bit of that. And, and I thought that was a really good read. It's a fascinating read. Um, Apart from that, it, honestly, it's just it's it's learning off people like Bill and people like Griffo, soaking and in, soaking it in, and just taking on feedback and advice. Yeah, that's uh, if you want a, a good one, I can. Jocko Willink's um, extreme extreme ownership is one of the best ones. He's a former um, SEAL, Navy SEAL, and he was yeah. high up in the in the chain of command. And then he had a whole ran the whole team and everything underneath. And he pretty much essentially him and his partner Liff Liff Babin they wrote this book together and they kind of outlined what they would do in the situation like they were out in the field or doing like a a which we have we call like a a mission mission yeah, yeah they're doing yeah, missions yeah. like that yeah. and then how then they would relate that and what the leadership skills they used and transfer into like a situation like in um like a business situation and stuff like that so business leaders and how yeah. you're going to manage your staff and all this sort of stuff i'll so, read that, that so when they good. Yeah, that and then he had a second one. It's called the dichotomy of, dichotomy of leadership. So there's breaking that down even more. Really interesting read. I'll, I've got the book here if you want to. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I actually don't have the you. first one back home, but the second one's here. Yeah, yeah, look into which it. one? The what was the first one? Extreme called? ownership. Where's that one? Back in Adelaide. Back home, in Adelaide. But get your get Amazon. Your and bring it back. I actually, want to I should, read it. I'll I read it. Actually, message it before she comes. I'll back. read it. Yeah, that's good. I'm just I'm just started reading a book by Simon Sinek called yeah. um, Start with Why. It's a book okay. on leadership and how yeah. the greatest leaders mm. of more business, more it's a business related yeah. book, but yeah. how the greatest leaders in 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 business um, basically start with the question why why do yeah. I do this? So I've only just started it, but mm. um, I'll, I'll give you up. Tools there. Tools of the Titans is a good one as well. That's okay. kind of similar, like different kind of leaders in in their fields in business or whatever. They um, essentially outline what they do to be successful. Yeah. There's a little like there's not like there's lots of chapters but a little like little lots of little chapters yeah. just outlining what they do to success and all this sort of stuff okay. it's quite interesting have you ever read um you can't hurt me by oh yeah david yeah goggins? Um, david goggins i haven't read the book but i've heard i've listened to his podcast yeah. and stuff dude that guy's crazy he his book's good yeah his book's have, have to you gotta read it it's, yeah. it's, it's unreal but yeah he's he's insane i've you probably listened to it listen to him on joe rogan yeah, i listen to his joe rogan podcast the, the stories that he comes out with man is actually is incredible this the the resolve that guy like he's like like obviously he's, he's tough mentally tough but just the kind of just the amount of times he's been down just kept coming back yeah like he would have like many people wouldn't be would able quit. to quit would have quit yeah the one that resonated with me um in his book <laughs> the dog squealing um the one that resonated with me in his book so he's just this freak he's a freak right yeah and he was a freak navy seal anyway he had this um he wanted to he lost a couple of mates in battle and he wanted to raise some money for a charity yep so <coughs> basically what he said was that he was going to run a hundred mile ultra marathon oh, yeah. his first ever ultra marathon he was he's not a good runner he's never been a runner in his mm. life he's just this jacked up navy seal right yeah, big 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 boy, boy. like he was just big boy. Yeah. yeah he's like i'm gonna run this hundred hundred mile ultra marathon mm. um 
And this specific one he wanted to run, it was, um, it was called the Bad Water. Yeah. And he called the Bad Water organizer and the organizer says, you know, you can't enter our event unless you've already run one or two ones yeah. in the lead up. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, when's the event? The event's in like two months. And how many, you know, lead up races can I do? She's like, there's only two more left. You need to do them both. And one is this Saturday and he's literally calling them on a Wednesday. <laughs> um, and he's gone, right, I'll do it. And he's gone, he's preparing to run this 100 mile, 100 miles, so that's like extra, more than 100K. That's what, 1.6 miles to a K. It's a lot. You do it's the math. Up. And I'll keep telling the story. Yeah. Um, and anyway, he's going to run this on this Saturday, right? He's never run over like probably 20, 30K in his life. Never even run a marathon. Um, and the, the Friday, the night before he's about to run, he's one of his good... Um, good war buddies uh, one of his good navy seal buddies basically yeah. goes mate i'm going to go do um some lifting like do you want to come and do some lifting he's like oh, no nah, i've got this 100 yeah. mile race tomorrow 160 kilometers 160 kilometer race km, tomorrow yeah. and he, and his mate goes oh you you, you pussy you know? yeah <laughs> that's um you, that's a bit you know don't 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 um, don't take the easy road and so he's gone and done a power lifting session mm. the friday night jacked heavy heavy leg weights big squats big deadlifts and like yeah, you can imagine those right. guys would they'd lift heavy yeah yeah, like yeah. He's a big oh, they he was a big yeah, guy they don't quit and then he's gone out and he's run 160 and he said by about by about the 40 kilometer or 50 kilometer he he could barely feel his legs um mm. like he was he he was in that much pain he'd shat himself by like yeah by like goodness. the 80th kilometer and he was like yeah, yeah. convulsing and, his and partner, he, he, his yeah. partner was sitting there watching him and he finished the race and he had to go straight to hospital after the race yeah, wow. and it's just it's incredible that he his mental resolve when he's like halfway through this race and he's like feel like he's about to die he's you know he's pre-game work, uh drink was a, a protein yeah, shake yeah it's just a protein shake yeah that, yeah, it's just crazy. That, that, and he, he had the mental resolve to go, I'm not quitting. Yeah, I will then, not quit. I will then, not quit. Yeah, and then it was all he had, um, when, once he got home and he was like, he was yeah, not, not doing good things, well, not good things was happening to his body. He was like, potentially was going, breaking he was, down. He was pissing up blood. Yeah, like he was that. doing yeah. like shitting himself, all this sort of stuff. And then was it, the, was it two weeks later or something like that? He already planned to do a marathon with his mum and his and his partner wife. at the time, I think, yeah. his wife. In Vegas, and, yeah. But, yeah, and then he said, oh, I'll, try to, I'll walk it with your mum. And then he's, as he's, well, over two weeks, like one week couldn't, couldn't get out of bed, then try to walk around. Like he was just, yeah. his body wouldn't broken down. Then I'm going to walk it. And then he said he started to walk and he goes, nah, screw it. I'm going to run. He ran it. What a nut. And he, and he, and he ran a, he ran a good time. He come yeah, second wasn't. or third or fourth yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. He did really well. Hmm. Always like the, the pull-up story was, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he failed it twice and then. The, the most pull-ups in a day, in tw- yeah. In 24 hours. Or like a certain amount in a day, yeah. Something like that. So I actually, what, what I took out of his book was that your body can do so much more than you think it can mm. do. And like I, on a very minor scale, like mm. I'm trying to do a little bit more in my weeks this before leading up to footy. Like I'm trying to do some sprints on like a Wednesday, whereas in the past I probably would have gone, oh, I'm going to be sore on Saturday. But sort of what I've gleaned from his book is that your body can actually handle a lot more than you think it can handle. Mm. So just do it. Yeah. Just actually do it. Yeah. I think the biggest thing as well from his book is to not to go out and do the, he, there was one he did four miles every four hours for 20, for 40 yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah. So you, like, you, like obviously Joe Blow off the couch can't go and do it, but it's like take little, the, the mental stuff that he has, like just pick yourself up. Every, like he's been deep, bent down so many times, just like every time just keep picking yourself up. There's always something you can always get to and work to. Yeah. But like to go out and do that sort of stuff is all pretty crazy and doing the 24 hour pull up, pull up challenge and, that sort of stuff is good in a way, but like, like your average, you got to work up to that. And and he is a very unique case. Like, I think if you took that him and there wasn't any other person, that would have he would have broken down and not be able to do it. But just has some kind of mental capacity to keep keep going. Crazy. Yeah.